Hello and welcome to Adobe Live on the sofa here in the UK and we are here every day from 12 until 1. Now if you're watching on YouTube that's just fine but if you want to get involved in the discussion and ask questions then join us on behance.net slash Adobe Live. It's where you can really get involved with the topic, the presenter and the community. And don't forget we also have a Discord so you can actually take the conversation on beyond the stream. Well, today I think we are in for a real treat. You're going to absolutely love the visual fest you get from our guest today, who is Kyle Wilkinson. Good morning, Kyle. How are you? Now then, um, yeah, I'm all good. Thanks. Rainy Yorkshire. So, uh, yeah, all good. I think we've all got a bit of a bit of a rainy day today. I think actually, I think that's that's the way it is. But you're going to brighten it up for us, I'm sure. Looking through uh, we'll your work, and you know, it's it's been really good. So for people who've never uh, never come across your name before, which uh, which of course is always possible, uh, unlikely but always possible, then uh, tell us a bit more about yourself, then Kyle. Yeah, so I'm Kyle Wilkinson, and unsurprisingly, uh, I am founder of Wilkinson Studio, um, uh, a studio based in Sheffield in Yorkshire, where we specialise in not specialising, and that's something that I'm going to talk about a little uh, today uh, in terms of the approach that's worked for me uh, over the years, and pass on any advice where where possible, and answer any questions. Um, but really championing uh, this kind of broad, varied approach that we that we take as a studio, and and I've taken um, all throughout my career, really. Fantastic. Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to getting into this. It's going to be really good. Just before we do uh, start rolling, though, let's uh, have a look at who we've got in the chat because that's quite busy, and I'm hoping we'll get some good questions. Uh, today as we go along. Uh, so we've got some of our regulars here, Kirsty, we've got Robert, we've got Steve, we've got Julia, uh, we've got Anthony, uh, Sandrine, plenty in there. So yep, they're all quite happily chatting away uh, right now and really looking forward to uh, what you're going to show us, Carl. So away you go, take it away. Yeah, so so one of the first uh, things that I want to talk about is the um, the experimental nature of the output of the studio, um, mm-hmm. and I think anybody that has come across any previous and old work uh, that uh, that I've been involved with is is probably come from this experimental nature and, and really championing that you can make great things out of of weird things, of of cheap things, of expensive things. It doesn't matter. It's it's just all about how you look at things. Um, And then if anybody's got any questions on how it was made um, or any questions on on the approaches I'm talking, just just drop them in and I'll do my best. Yeah. 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 Um, So so this is me. Uh, This is actually kind of like a really poncy photo because um, <laughs> it's not really real. It were a bit of a setup, uh, but in terms of giving up the be- behind the scenes, because I weren't wearing a shirt, pouring water all over it. Uh, I thought this was back in the day when I thought we uh, we had to look posh. Uh, and um, but this were a project for Wired uh, magazine, and this was one of the first things that I think had quite a bit of a, a, a visual, um, uh, like a style to it. That as now, I think the aesthetic has has, has really has really come on. Uh, in recent times, which is great to see. Um, but it was this watertight treatment that a lot of people, I think, have seen as uh, it won a few awards. Um, it won a, won a few awards. I think it did this about six six years ago. Um, and it's, it's this this work, I mean, it still still looks quite um, quite modern now, which I'm quite quite happy with. And it, what, what's, um, what really does make me happy about this type of work is that it's coming to more to the forefront of, of design now, this kind of weird yes. stuff, um, this weird abstract experimental stuff, which is great. It's great to see. Um, and this was one of the first things that we we did that really got some major coverage um, that, that went out in a few magazines and attracted uh, the attention of a few people and, and, and then went on to work with quite a few clients from the back of this image, which was uh, which were great. But we, we kind of just play with stuff. So the, a big, a big kind of toolbox of setting things on fire, wetting things, blowing things up, whatever it can be, submerging stuff, um, anything really, woodwork, 
tools, just any tools are, all, are not off the off the table with this kind of stuff. So it's just a case of experimenting and see what works. A lot of it goes in the bin. A lot of it doesn't work. Um, so don't look at this and see the final image and see, see that, oh God, how do, how do you create that? It's through a lot of trial and error and a lot of effort. So it's not just like some sort of design wizard that kind of comes along and, and magic's along. It's a lot of trial and error. Um, so we set fire to stuff, which creates typography like this. Um, which we created then a piece um, like this, which uh, again, this is probably three three or four years old, um, an editorial piece like this, but it's probably more apt uh, now uh, and in this current period, which is fairly uh, sad really that it's it's probably even less great now, but uh, it were in more reference to uh, the whole Brexit stuff, which we'll not get into, uh, but it's, uh, it's more of a, an editorially led concept. Um, that we're trying to tell a message with uh, visual forms, so, you know, the shattering and the, 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 the great going up in flames is in reflection um, to, to the news. Oh, it's what's, really what's strong, on. really strong. So, like, love it. So, so, yeah. so there's that kind of approach that we take. Mm. Um, and, and then this is kind of me with uh, back in the day when I had uh, more black hair than grey hair, uh, which were a good time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, this were a piece for Wired in Germany, actually, uh, which were all focused around uh, nature. So we created some type out of... Uh, uh, roots. We annihilated one of the plants in the studio. Unfortunately, uh, it gave its life for uh, for the cause. Uh, so, it's, but it's just this kind of looking around and seeing what objects you can use in creativity. It doesn't this didn't cost a lot of money? Didn't require a lot of kit. Um, it's just about looking what materials you can play with and and, and see what you can do with it. Um, and then reusing assets. This is this is another explosive type um, kinetic approach that we used. Again, all photographic, uh, where we wanted to to create something that were more um, had a lot of energy to it, um, and reflecting that even though you might be feeling like you're falling apart, never stop, never stop moving forward, um, is what we were kind of talking about in, in this particular message. Um, and then this that this were one of the front covers of Computer Arts magazine. Um, and I mean, it's weird and wonderful stuff like this that I really kind of get fascinated by um, and, and really enjoy. And this was actually Tesco value 59 pence cream, double cream, <laughs> that we just chucked in some water. Yeah, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be expensive. It wasn't, it wasn't expensive to produce. Um, it, it, it took a bit of time to get there and produce the image as in a bit of trial and error and uh, a little bit of a, you know, kind of just tweaking and tinkering in Photoshop mm. as well uh, and use, utilizing all the tools that you've got, got at hand. But it, it doesn't have to be big expensive setups that, um, that if you're aspiring or want to try and get into this type of work, you don't have to try and emulate what ad agencies have uh, with huge budgets, uh, for example, to create interesting images, um, which I think is important to to champion really, because it's it, it, it's anybody at grassroots level that wants to get involved with this type of work, they can. Um, and this is why I've bought this image in there, just to, to show that you, you can pick them up for 59p and, and create something uh, that I think is interesting at least, um, <laughs> which uh, is- Amazing shapes, that lovely organic, so, so the because it is <laughs> so, so, the, so the, yeah. the the idea of it is that it was for the cover title was the art of the rebrand, and we wanted to create the idea I come up with was uh, creating to me fine art is looking at the marble statues that are in museums, and I wanted to try and create that aesthetic, but not spend fifteen years trying to carve a chunk of marble out like Michelangelo or something like that. Um, and so I just made it out of cream. Uh, and that's the only thing that I could think of that we could make it out of to try and create them shapes that are quite artistic and, and, and creating them forms. Uh, and then putting some type in there that showcased that that transition from bold to, to a light condensed typeface where it's just trying to mimic that idea of metamorphosis and rebranding. Uh, so, but it kind of brings me on to this uh, this thought of uh, avoiding craving validation from others, which is something that I think I learned along the way. Um, I mean, I think even anybody at any stage in the career and, and still do now is that you, you want some validation on your, your thoughts and ideas. But when you when you're creating stuff that looks a bit weird 
or might be out of a new material or might be completely new as a, as a format. I, I mean, it probably, it's not going to hit home right away because people have never seen it. It's, it's a mm. bit weird. So it's probably not going to get that validation from, from others. Um, and that doesn't mean it's not good work. Um, I mean, the real value for anybody in this, this line of work is their vision. It's your vision. It's your take on things. That's the real yeah, value of absolutely. it. Not mm. because somebody else likes it. Um, I mean, Oogies and Monkeys, it's, it's just, it, 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 it's just it's ridiculous. Uh, just, just trying to fa- validate it yourself. So, uh, because it's your vision and that's all you need. You don't need others, others giving you, you a think- like. Do you think with with uh, with platforms like Instagram and so many designers and artists uh, t- deciding to use that platform that there's a risk when they don't see that sort of gratification and and validation all the time that it's off putting for them? I mean, your message is solid, but do you think that that there's a tendency for people to be like that these days? It does. I think it's 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 absolutely at the forefront of the industry, and I think it's a huge problem um, mm. because, I mean, you've you've always had celebrity people for like you know, celebrity photographers would often f- photograph celebrities. There's always been that historically before Instagram, uh, and and in the industry, you've always got people with that kind of celebrity uh, that uh, that will carry some weight. But putting it at the forefront of your career is just a big mistake because. A platform could change. I mean, there is power in social media. It can't be, it can't be kind of devalued to a certain point. But it's just been, it's not the be all and end all. Our studio account has got 179 followers. Yet we've worked with Mercedes Benz, Santander, big clients. With, you know, it doesn't need, doesn't that reflect uh, uh, the weight of what your work is and and how valuable you are to your clients. If you don't, if that doesn't equate to five million likes on Instagram, because it's just, it's not, it has a value, but not as much as people think. I mean, I mean, it's that ridiculous. I were eating a pizza for my dinner the other day. Genuinely, this happened last week. I were, I were having a pizza for my dinner, and I had yeah. an email through to become an influencer an influencer for a fitness brand. You know, one of these like, drink this protein shake, I've got chiseled abs. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not happening. So, yeah, I mean, that's no. how ridiculous it is, is that is, it has the power, but they were asking me to be an influencer for a fitness brand. I mean, I, it doesn't marry up. That's just how you've got somebody being often very lazy at the other end of your computer, just kind of firing out a lot of emails just to look to people um, because they've got a certain follower count. Mm-hmm. So don't don't use other people's validation to make sure that your ideas are good. Um, so some of this experimental work has led to us. I've just uh, just mentioned one of the clients that got on the book, which is nice. Is um, is uh, is Mercedes, um, and they approached us not through anything. Um, often you'll find is that clients will say, "I like that. Can we have a bit of that, please?" Um, they came to us just for an idea because they'd seen the thought process that goes into a lot of the projects and the concepts that uh, are at the forefront of the work and they came to us for a solution and, and I think that that's key is that then sometimes clients will just look for an idea and a solution rather than a style or spin on something um, so we came up with this uh, for their fashion talents program which was connecting the world through fashion uh, and and the, they, they sponsor all the fashion weeks so London Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, uh, New York Fashion Week they're always there and the idea and concept is that uh, that we came up with um, and delivered for them was the 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 fashion is very much different from South America than it is in Asia than it is in Europe. The styles and the visual styles are completely different. Um, yet the passion for the fashion uh, is it remains the same throughout. So that that passion connects all the the different nuanced visuals and styles together and connect all the following so so we came up with this and then we uh, we created it in 3d as well uh, so it's just got a little bit of a video so we played this this played at their fashion talents events uh, 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 it started off in Berlin uh, we went to one in London actually we, we managed to go to one in London and it and it showcased um, all the designers that uh, that were on their books in the fashion talent stuff so you can just see how it kind of all interlinked and just went all around the different um, 
countries and areas of the world and showcased um, showcased these individual designers. So that was the concept that we came up with uh, for them in terms of connecting the world. I love that idea of a, of a matrix. The uh, on there. The a um, couple of questions, couple of things for you. A couple of yeah. comments, if I can, just pitch some yeah. in. Uh, Richard uh, is saying that uh, this is going back to the things you were making earlier, like the explosions and so on. Uh, yeah, you know that you can fake a lot of this with CGI, but there's something about the real thing that makes yeah. it much more individual. I wholeheartedly <clears throat> agree with that. I think. Yeah. Um, Sandrine is also. Uh, this is talking back to Richard, saying uh, there was. A, there was a thing that was done by a studio that had a lava lamp effect for the BBC. And all people kept asking was what was the software that did it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the often, that's often the, 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 the big questions, isn't it? What pen do you use and what pencil do you use? And I think <laughs> I, I must have a really nice camera. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. What camera do you use? I mean, I mean, yes, sometimes the equipment is, uh, you know, it does facilitate, uh, you know, a sharper result. If you've got a better lens, you might get that, you might get a slightly better result from, from mm. the camera, but it doesn't stop you from from creating the work. It doesn't stop you. It's a, it, it's a tool. It facilitates the work. It doesn't create it. You create the work. You create the concepts. And the mm. polish and the finish on it is is more comes from your experience and you, you your ability to be able to use them tools. It's certainly not the tool. I mean, David Bailey is going to be able to take a better photo than I can in a million years. On a camera phone, then if I had a massive Hasselblad 100K setup, so it's it's just a fact because he's better uh, and he's more experienced. So he's, it's not the tools. Yeah, absolutely, I'd agree, absolutely. Um, but this brings me on to another point about the Mercedes thing as well. Is that um, you know, yes, I've been very very lucky to work with big clients and big brands, and they've, they've approached us to work with. I'm very very lucky to have done that. Um, but they're not, it doesn't mean you've made it. I mean, people think you uh, you get these clients. I just want to kind of like demystify and just demyth this thing that um, big clients mean you've made it and you just dance down the street with a big bag of cash over your shoulder uh, and, and that's it. I've, I'm not going to put any more effort in. Every like day, month is, 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 is a grind with this career because you're always trying to push forward. I mean, that's part of it, so embrace it. And enjoy that part of it because it's 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 you never know what's around the corner with this this type of work which is what i find really interesting you never know who's gonna come and get in touch with you and that could be small or large and you can do interesting work for some of the most interesting work that i've ever done is is, is for smaller clients um so it's it's not big clients are great i don't want to kind of that I, I love working with them but it's not the be all and end all so do you do you think that that's because they're more responsive? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but th it's not. is that because small clients are able to be more agile in the way that they they work with you, that you've got more time to explain around something with them? Do you think that would be one think, of the benefits? I think it's you? just more so that there's, there's less red tape in a lot of projects, which um, you, you don't jump through as many hoops with things like larger clients. They, it inherently comes with... Um, a lot of different processes and stages that you've got to go through, which then can dilute a project sometimes. Thankfully, a lot, you know, we've had, you know, some that have been, have gone that way and, and some that have, you know, the Mercedes stuff, you know, stayed fairly true to what we wanted to create in terms of, we, we created a big physical model at their fashion week as well of the interconnecting lines, which were really cool. Um, and, but it's just, I think, yeah, it's not, it's not just, it's not to say one is better than the other. It's just to say that don't devalue a smaller client just because they don't have the household name. The household name only helps uh, me explain what I do to my mum half of the time because, uh, you know, when she says, what do you do? I uh, play with crayons uh, all day. It's not, <laughs> not really some other that kind of hits home. So, yeah, do colouring in. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, so um, all, until, until you say you set stuff on fire and then she starts to get a bit worried. Um, yeah. But then, I mean, the, the paper cut stuff as well, this is something that anybody can dabble with, I think, um, because it's so it's so cost effective, it's so cheap, you can experiment with it. Um, and this were a project that we created for uh, a shopping centre for the 25th birthday, and they wanted a real, all the brief was, was create, we want something that um, reflects like a carnival theme. Um, we want it to feel like a party. So we created this um, this 
designed just through paper and, we, and the re reason why we kept creating it through paper is just so it had that more tactile nature to it and again um uh, going back to the uh, the person who mentioned about like the um that when it's made out of something real rather than in a in a uh, uh, software package is i think it's a lot a lot more endearing because people have got a bit of a connection to something that they can relate to so cutting out paper people can relate to how intricate this would have been um, so i think that that's why, why it becomes a little bit more endearing as a project not only that that you from a client's perspective they get a secondary use from a content um yeah. a, from a content perspective is that they get the behind the scenes shots and they get the interest in oh actually we've gone the extra mile to create this stuff um in you know in a and it's 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 real um it's real life stuff so it's interesting to 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 anybody to to, to take a look at because they, they automatically assume that everything's created in computers these days mm -hmm. uh, that's not to devalue um cgi stuff either uh, so we created this image uh for celebrating their 25th anniversary uh, which was a bit of a branded campaign uh, that went on to you to be used throughout their um shopping center and it created it culminated in one uh, one big party on, on, on the main birthday, uh, which involves like kind of people falling down from the roofs, like with these trapeze artists and all oh, wow. this explosion of color that this piece then reflected and, and, and became the symbol of so. so um, and then I love we, that that's a real thing. I love yeah, so that. I think that paper stuff is always, I think it's really quite interesting, like they even just figuring out ways of doing some of the intricate details. So, uh, I did purposely did it at this scale. I remember because the dots. I were really keen for the dots to be on it, um, on in the middle of the twenty-five. I were really keen to have that as part of the aesthetic. And uh, the whole reason that drove the the scale of the the size were that then holes were what I could easily produce out of a hole punch rather than cutting oh, out yeah, individual yeah. holes. So it's just thinking ahead on projects and try not to get too plan ahead so that you know what you're doing. And you can you can kind of use that to your own advantage for the project. Um, this one is not one that I'm going to uh, probably do anytime soon. Again, uh, this was for computer arts. Again, this is just where you can come up with these different ideas. Uh, this was for a brief on why is design important. And to me, it's because we create the future as designers and as visual artists. Um, that could be from sci-fi stuff to just you know new campaigns what, what pe people's interests. So we use our eyes to create the future. So I decided to project the type onto my eyeball, um, which uh, took hours and was very painful. Um, and you can see, um, yeah, it was stupid really, uh, but it, it looked cool, uh, which uh, which. I'm quite happy with how it came out. Um, yeah, but, it's, yeah. So it's it's just an interesting way of utilizing the tools again to create something that's got that little bit of tactility to it. But it's the things in that that you would, you know, you some you could argue somebody could argue and say, well, yeah, you could have done that in Photoshop just as easily. But I don't I don't necessarily think that's always true because you wouldn't. The thing that makes that real for me uh, uh, anyway is uh, seeing the eyelashes there with those small drops of color that I don't yeah. think you'd it'd be, be really diligent and observant. It'd that. be very, the thing is, is that he's trying to imagine that. I mean, there's going to be some wonderful, uh, amazing artists out there that can recreate that kind of thing, but like, it's far beyond me, far, mm -hmm. far beyond me. And, and to me, uh, like it gives it more weight um, for the piece itself. Um, the, you try, you're using your eyes to create the future, and it's that's my eye. It's going back to what I said earlier about people's value in, in what they're you know what they're viewing. And whatever your thing is in design or illustration or creativity, it's yours. And this is this was my view on it with my eyes, um, and that that to me gives it more weight and, and more, and more value um, behind the meaning of it. So, but it's just again, this is where you can dream up and experiment with different things. I mean, this took forever to get right as well. It, it, I mean, I nearly get up with it because it was just like, this is, I mean, my eyes would look like I've been chopping onions all day. It were ridiculous, but I mean, it, it looked good in the end. Um, but it's these kind of experiments have led on to other like commercially viable types of branding projects, such as, um, you know, be a, be a, projects with the chalk type, doing this type of thing. So then projects led on, uh, they, you know, there are a lot of type heavy work because everybody seems to be involved with type projects these days. Um, yeah. And uh, which is, and, and I mean, it's a good thing to be involved with. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of different options that you can do with 
primarily 26 letters. So it's, it is, it's, it's, there's some really cool stuff that can be done. Mm -hmm. Um, so, starting to make Richard miss the miss Meadow Hall and uh, <laughs> and the Apple yeah. Store there. By the way. Well, yeah, and I mean that's uh, I mean it's like any store, Apple Store, they're always run. Yeah. Um, so and then yeah, so and then just more vector based stuff. So this is this is um, using don't really do much in three D like the studio does. Um, these this is kind of small work from from me, uh, just me. Um, and uh, well, the, so this this particular piece, some of the other stuff we had, um, Dan O'Cock and uh, Mark Wilmot on, on with the uh, photography side of things and, and the uh, the design, uh, one of uh, our old designers. Mm. Uh, so um, so yeah, this is just like kind of utilizing uh, the the Illustrator and Photoshop across the board to, to create the three D type, and this is just other ex examples of styles. There's not there's not one style that I stick to when um, when creating this type of work. Just so that there were, there's the freedom to experiment and try new things, and and be completely different and style agnostic, really, which I'm a big champion of. Um, so I'll move on to kind of what I said about the um, the element of not spe specializing in not specializing uh, and i believe uh, i'm a big champion of transferable skills and i really think you can you can use a lot of these skills if you can design one thing i think it were uh, massimo that said if you can design one thing you can design anything and i'm a big believer in that um that and 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 really i, I don't know if it, it, it could be I, I get bored and want to try and try my hat Try my hand at different things, um, or an insecurity where I just want to prove that I can design stuff. I don't know which one it is. Probably a bit of both. Um, and uh, yeah, so your skills are transferable. And so a few years back, we got this was probably seven years ago now. So uh, we got asked to do an exhibition uh, with lasers and create an exhibition which invited some of the country's top artists and designers uh, from from all around the UK. Uh, and this were great fun, and uh, I didn't want to do anything that were, that were print-based. Primarily, I'm a brand designer, graphic designer, uh, and I wanted to use see if I could design something else that I never, never designed, uh, never, never tried before. And so, I designed this chair out of acrylic, and the idea was to create something that was very intricate from from the from one side, and when you went went around the front. Uh, you had a completely different look and aesthetic to it. So this was like more of a really simple um, visual as opposed to the, the side view, which was really intricate. Now, I, I, I should imagine that quite a few of the community at the moment are actually looking and uh, and imagining that this was done in 3D software. Now, I know I know the truth on this, but do you want to do you want to do the reveal? On yeah, this one so, then, so, so, so everything everything you see here is designed in Illustrator. So you can Amazing. use these packages from Adobe uh, to 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 do work like this. And this is I have no training. I'm an absolute numpty when it comes to stuff like this. So uh, it's um, it, like this is just a, a pure stubbornness to try and figure things out. That's one thing that. Uh, that I know that I, I have in my uh, locker that I'm quite stubborn uh, and I'll, I'll try things until I've figured it out. And I think that that is just that perseverance is is one thing to try and build up that resilience to everybody has imposter syndrome. Everybody thinks they can't do something. That's the nature of this work is, is that you're fragile around your ideas. It's not some, anybody who's uh, is, is saying otherwise is full of shit. So the, 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 uh, it's just that, that everybody's got it. Um, so so yeah so we designed all this in uh, in, in illustrator uh, and then created it on a laser um and then this is like a really cheesy embarrassing photo and we sat on it um again another one where i had black hair uh, which is always good to reflect upon <laughs> uh and then um uh, the following year they asked us to do it again and we great we grew the exhibition was great i mean we had some really good talents uh, involved we had um a uh, really good designer from Scotland, uh, Stephen Bonner. Uh, uh, but two of the people that have actually done like, live streams on here before, uh, Gordon Reed uh, yeah. or Middle Boop, he, he were in part of this exhibition. We asked uh, Radim as well from Brand New, yeah. uh, and, and he did a, did a piece for this. And I wanted to do another chair, but tackle it from a different approach. So make it, um, 
really detailed from the front and really simple uh, from the side, so the reverse. And this was uh, something, the other chair, the acrylic one was really fragile, so it looked like it would glass and were gonna break. This is built like a tank and uh, is pretty much indestructible. So um, so that you, this is the stool that we decided, designed, um, and then this is the rocking chair. So this is made out of Corten steel, which naturally rusts. Uh, and gives it that um, patina on there. Um, and the idea is that you would put this outside and it's as an outdoor rocking chair and it would just sit within the green landscape um, really well. And then this is an example of, the, this is a photo of the exhibition when, when it was there. Just above the chair is Gordon's piece in the middle of that wall. And then on the big- Gordon's on actually on. Side. Gordon's is actually it? here with us. He's with us. He said, hello, mate. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, he, he's, he's loving that beer that he's rocking at minute. Oh, yeah, he is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the, the, the big, um, large black piece in the, um, uh, on the left-hand side, that's uh, Radim from Brand News. That's, uh, that's his yep. piece. And then the, uh, both the stool, uh, I think that will bend the illustrators as well. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we had a, a, a multitude of different kind of like approaches and talents and different, you know, from all from different backgrounds, uh, which were, it were great. It, I mean, it was just a, a great showcase of what you can do with creativity and lasers. And that, that's what the idea, what we came up with for the client is was a showcase is they wanted to attract more design related uh, stuff. So we said, show what you can do with lasers as opposed to like more an engineering background that lasers tend to be and tend to work yeah. in. Uh, so yeah, so you can see from the front, it is really intricate and from the side. And as I mentioned to you, Tony, I like hiding W's because I'm a complete yep. narcissist in, in the work. So you can see in the rocking chair that it's a bit of a wiggly W and then on the stool there's a W there right. as well. Um, so, so I like to do that in, uh, just for my own kind of narcissism. The people um, are loving it. They're absolutely loving it. They, oh, uh, there's a lot of wows times. and a lot of stunning. No, kind. that's amazing, says Caroline. Absolutely amazing, says uh, okay. Rye. Uh, they... I, I want to reinforce the point. Um, I, 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 on 99% of the time, I have absolutely zero idea what I'm doing. Um, so if you fancy doing it, give it a go, because I have no training. I have no idea. Mm. Um, oh, and another big point is accountability through friends and families. So if you work on your own, if you're working solo, um, and you're wanting to try something, text your mates, text, email me if you want, email somebody, tweet somebody, or tweet it out there that you're going to do something because it gives you that accountability and the kick up the ass to go and do it. Um, and like this is one example where I did it back in, I went through my tweets to do this. I did it in Feb 2015. I wanted to create a lamp, never created a lamp. And uh, some of the stuff uh, that I've been doing, I, I, I weren't getting out there. So I just said, I'm going to do this, put it on the blog. Uh, and then did it. I said, before February is done, I'm going to have designed a lamp. So I created this. Uh, again, similar, just completely experiment. And I like to encourage through the studio uh, experimentation. So this is just um, a, a light that we created out of aluminium. I'm going to fly. I've realized the time, so I'm going to quickly go through some of these. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Um, so, so yeah, so this this was just again an experimental experimental R and D project. Uh, learn some stuff. Learn how this material reacts. Learn how the, how we can slot things together. How a different way of doing things. And then I showed you this earlier. This was one of the things that did uh, as a, from a commercial perspective is that we got this as a client piece. So these are um, uh, product stands that ended up in Fort and the Masons. So you, put, you sit your product to, uh, on top of these. And you yeah. can have them at different heights um, so that you, you can paint them different colors. And you've just got, a, again, a modern uh, approach and modern view. And that directly links to this project. I know you had Craig Black um, on talk championing um, uh, side projects and, and, and personal projects. And I think that that really does push your work forward and can attract work and commercial uh, clients to come and uh, come and buy some of the stuff that uh, that you enjoy doing and, and, and enjoy playing with. Um, so just scroll. Do you test out in cardboard? So before you actually commit? Yes. Yeah. 
So, so do you like high density cardboard and test it. So, out? so the some of the stuff is cardboard, or you can quickly get something ran off on with MDF, um, or even paper. You can you can actually slot paper together like yeah. this this lamp. You can actually slot paper together, and it will it'll kind of be a bit floppy, and you'll just juggle with it a little bit. But you can you can do that completely uh, yeah. with paper, or or even just like eat your frosties, get your frosties uh, box, and away you go. Chop um, it up, there you are. Yeah, yeah. chop it up. Do you, um, weld, do you ever weld any? Do you, someone's asking, Catherine's asking, do you ever uh, arc or MIG weld any of your pieces? I don't, uh, but I think the, the 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 thing there was if it would be if a, if a project required that, collaborate, this is, I mean, the, the laser uh, company was um, instrumental in a lot of this work in helping. You'll be surprised at how many people um, just ask, ask somebody, you know, I've done, I've learned through doing and asking people because people people are, are nice enough to to help you and and are, and are really interested in in creating something new themselves. So mm. Just just go out and ask. You know, don't be afraid of trying and asking. Um, and somebody will be able to point in the right direction. So so no, I don't. I've absolutely. If I tried welding, God, my mates would have a right laugh at that because I'd end up in a <laughs> I end up in a &E all the time anyway. So if I tried welding, geez, and set myself on fire. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, so this uh, this is another project to show you the thing from Fortums. This is another project yeah. that we got involved with because of the experimental stuff. I mean, I love this photo. I have no idea who this guy is, but he's looking like he's having a right good old time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, this is what I look like when I go to awards dues because I've had a few too, too many beers. But um, it uh, we designed the trophies for for the Brand Impact Awards. Uh, so they got in touch after seeing this, uh, and the concept behind these is that. There's 13 pieces that put them together. It's symbolizing um, the uh, the need for, for a branding program to have individual elements that all need to come together and work together um, to form a brand. And that's the idea is that we have the, the, the different pieces that interlock and, and come together to create a brand, or in this case, create a trophy. And these went up, these still get um, fired out every year. Um, this one went to Sagmeister and Walsh. Um, so. They must have got an award for taking the clothes off. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So uh, we all had different fins. Um, so this is a brass fin. We had copper fin and a steel fin to differentiate what tier of award. Um, and again, going back uh, to what I said about the accountability, is I wanted to do some more furniture because I've not done anything like this for a while from the studio, uh, and I wanted the studio to kind of release some new furniture and some stuff. Um, and I've never done, I've done the light. I really enjoyed the light. I also needed some new lights for my house. So I thought, kill two birds, one stone. Um, so I can get some free lights effectively um, and design some. So I put this tweet out. I'd not designed a single thing, but we booked a space at London Design Week. Uh, at London's, really? uh, yeah, I booked a space. Yeah. I had absolutely zero idea what we were doing. Um, and it's funny how necessity make you create and force things in life so i think that that's uh, that's a real key thing to to to, to remember and and we created uh, this is one of the lights um just to actually look behind me uh, so we've got this brass light which is really right kind of reflective uh polished brass yeah um, so uh back uh, to this um so yeah so we created these and launched the first collection uh, the first edition uh, the uh, London Design Festival. This included tables as well, but I've never photographed them, so I've got no decent photos. But I've, the laptop, uh, ironically, is sat on one. Um, so it's um, yeah, we released these, and then you know, thankfully they got featured in some magazines, and we sold some, which was mm. was great. So you can That's see how you, you can productize the work as well, and and, and really push it forward. Mm. and how you can create and again all this we created in illustrator so they're all folded and then bolted together so if you just imagine it like a big net like a packaging project that's yep. how they work and then a little upcoming project is this bottle owner that we're we're working on and designing uh, so that's made out of acrylic um and just i'm going to quickly talk through another few bits just to try and Avoid comfortable situations, um, like to push your work forward. Um, and I'm in no way, shape or form comfortable drawing um, or illustrating projects. It's all, I'm very, um, no idea what I'm doing. Uh, like I said, 99% of the time on, on most of the work, but you just figure it out and, and create things uh, and, and 
dig yourself out of the hole. Um, yeah. And 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 I'm, I'm I'm never created a style or been able to work towards a style. And I've been working on recently in lockdown. Um, I said, all right, I'm going to try and uh, start doing some drawings. Um, and started creating some of these illustrations of daily desires and some of these illustrations that are just more vector-based, more more clean design. That, um, and I'm forcing myself to learn. I am in no way, shape, shape or form comfortable even talking about this work, really, I suppose, because I'm not confident in it at all. Um, but I hate not being able to do something. And the only way of being able to do something is learning and forcing yourself to learn. Um, so I'm... Yeah. I'm getting outside of my comfort zone by doing some of this. This is one of the, the, the image on the left is what I did for the promo of this uh, this live stream. Yes. And and so the, just working together, uh, working these graphics together just to cr try and create some sort of visual style. This were, the one on the right is my uh, homage to Freddie Mercury because I love Queen. Fabulous. Uh, and then recently the SpaceX launch and space is just a big fascination of mine. Uh, I think it's just incredible. So. so so this is some of the work that I've been doing in lockdown. And this is just something that I am not used to, to working on. And I just want to encourage getting outside your comfort zone. And you will feel more of that more of that imposter syndrome like I do with this type of work because it's completely out of your comfort zone. And you will feel a little bit, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. That's a good thing because that means you're mm. going to grow. Uh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to expand your skills. You're going to grow as a, as a creative. And I think that that's only then going to be applicable to to you to your day to day work, which mm. I'll quickly go through um, a project that we've recently uh, undertook. A couple of projects that we recently undertook. So this is more. Uh, this is a branding project that recently the studio has done for Santander. Um, so they're launching a new, well, they're building a new building in Milton Keynes uh, called Unity Place, um, which is a fantastic new. Uh, tech hub effectively uh, and where we're working with the where we've been appointed as what well, as part of the design team uh, to work on a variety of different things on the building which has been fantastic and it comes this comes from uh, the varied approach that the studio and, and I've taken for all these years is that well we've we've been consulted on staircases and lighting and uh, all these wonderful things that are going to be going inside the building which is, is great but one of the one of the thing, key things is is creating this new environment for staff to be working in. And we wanted to, this this new building is going to encourage exploring new ways of working, exploring new ways of looking after yourself and well-being, um, ex exploring new ways of communi community and commuting. Um, and we wanted to symbolise that with, um, with an astronaut. There is nothing more right. um, that encapsulates um, endeavour and ambition and aspiration than, than, than space exploration and, and astronauts. So, and not only that, it's 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 applicable um, and inclusive to everybody that works within uh, Santander. We were, we were keen to push uh, a design program through that didn't focus on one ethnicity or one gender or one age group. So we wanted a we wanted a human form that that was inclusive for everybody. So this is, again, it, it was it was one of these programs that we created for, for, for Astro, as we've named them, so that, that, um, that, that we can start communicating some of these different messages that this building uh, will promote um, in different poses, in different ways. So this is going to be animated, this is going to be in print, this is going to be in, um, um, in all throughout the building on, on screens and in motion where we're going to encourage new ways of um, exercising. So yoga classes. So how can we kind of get people excited about that and and, and, and deliver it in a non-selling you a mortgage manner, uh, which is always quite dry. And we wanted more of a, uh, a youth, like a more a child-like feeling to, to be evoked from this kind of work so that people can smile at it. Um, it's flexible enough as a system so that we can change the face so that we might want to talk about when we're talking about something um, like sustainability is at the heart of the building. We can reflect the mood in different tones within the, the, the face and the animation and creating this character so that we can we compose it and, and add different elements to it so that we can, can say anything that we want to, to staff and the surrounding right. community. Really it's going down well here as well, by the way. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's really kind. going down well.
too kind. So this is um, this were we, again we had um, Dan O'Cock on this and um, Ryan Herbert and Colt Wilson as well um, on the uh, on the team for this and we've it's, this is this is a project that it's difficult to talk about um because i can't say an awful lot about it um which is which because it's not some of the programs not been rolled out yet so it's, it's kind of this is just all very very new um so and then we've got a, a complete graphic system that uh, that is being put out there so that we you know santander spo uh, sponsor a lot of the um hireable bikes and we're trying to get people to commute in yeah. a different way and again, just just this this whole messaging and, and undertone of adventure and exploration uh, is is at the forefront of this branding program that we created for them. Um, and we've just got loads of different visuals and graphic language, like graphic tool um, sets that we've created for different audiences. Um, but Astro is very much at the forefront, um, and we can you know can convey different messages of meeting and greeting at the new building. And Lovely. Different poses, even for the for the maintenance guys, we even got to, got them a pose with a with a with a wrench there. Um, and again, I'm just quickly flying through because I just I know we've not got much time. Um, so it's, yeah, again, yeah, it's, we've got it's a just, good uh, good ten minutes or so, yeah. And you can like, go over a bit if you need to. Yeah. So if in terms of the the. The, the this whole language that we've created for them there's going to be more coming from the studio um i mean we're going to be working on this for quite some time uh with them because uh, the building's not the building just broke ground uh back in march uh so we're going to be working with them on this program uh but this is at the forefront and you'll start to see a lot more of this come out uh as it starts to go around um the whole the, the, the whole program uh, from a from a design perspective for, for Santander. So, um, so yeah, this this has been a really fun one. We've worked on this for quite some time, um, trying to bring this to life, and I'm I'm really pleased with this because to create to put something forward that is so different for a bank um, and so so rooted in creativity and and visually it looks completely different to anything out there for a bank, which. It was a was a risk for us really, um, uh, but it, we felt it were right, and we felt that adding more life and character to the brand would bring more life and character for the people, and and and, and that it's going to be communicating and um, and talking to, and that's what we want to do. We don't want to just make it feel dry and whack in a stock image of uh, somebody laughing in the sun, uh, which is often like what you see in banking yeah. stuff like, buy this and you're happy. Yeah. Um, and and it's, we wanted to give you something that had a little bit more thought and creativity behind it and, and more undertone again, again, concept, uh, conceptually uh, from, from an, everything's based around exploration. Which um, brings me on to another bit that is 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 very very new because we're still working on this, um, but it's it's kind of like it's it is live in Milton Keynes now, um, and so this is the building that is going to to be coming out of the ground um, yep. there, and one of the projects that we one of the side like little little bits of the project that we got asked to do was the hoarding for the building so that's the perimeter of the construction site and this is a bloody big building and uh, the the whole canvas was over half a kilometer long uh, mm -hmm. that we needed to work to i mean that really did test um illustrators um uh, capabilities designing that at like full size well half size at half a kilometer I mean, Dan O'Cock, who's probably watching this, uh, he's like an absolute wizard. Uh, just thanking you for a mention, yeah, actually. So, yeah, so he, he worked on this and he's an yeah. absolute wizard with, uh, he worked, worked with me on this. And um, yeah, so we created this. And then, again, so the, the, the hoarding, I really wanted, again, not to just stick something on that was selling. It looked like a giant banking advert. This is going to be there for a good couple of years while this building gets built. We wanted to start communicating this message uh, to the community uh, now and give something that had a concept and were rich in the, the playing to the community's history so that the older generation were included and then create something that looked cool as well, which I think yeah. is important. Uh, for the foreseeable future, so we created this concept. Milton Keynes is is rich in in history in tech, uh, and because this building is going to be really tech focused for Santander, that's Colossus, staff, isn't it? Part of Colossus. It is. It is it's it's uh, from Bletchley Park. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it, yeah. So um, um, Bletchley is just uh, on uh, right uh, as part of the area, uh, the surrounding area, and they created um, some of the first computers there. 
back in the war and and decoded all these kind of wonderful messages. Well, not wonderful enigma. messages, but enigma, the Enigma code, but mm. uh, all these different solutions that these wonderful solutions that came up with to to, to decipher these messages. We want, we thought what, there were an idea there, and it's steeped highly in Morse code. Yep. So, um, so the they used Morse code to convey all their messages and, and translate all these different things that they were they were coded as they sent messages around um, uh, well around Europe uh, during the war, and we felt as though there was something visual um, in there to to, to use. Uh, so we created um, a concept based around this. So this is just one of the patterns. So we've got a multitude of different patterns spanning this. Uh, holding line. So this is the code for explore, which is one of the again one of the uh, the, the words that's uh, primarily used in the branding program. Uh, and we created these patterns, and I, this is just an animated version to kind of demonstrate. But this is the, these were all created in Illustrator, um, and all this is the explore code repeated. So you've got a hidden message in there, and we created these patterns that would run alongside the holding line so that we added a layer of gamification in there so that we could encourage people to go along with the phones because this, this, um, the, the holding is the Morse code printed on, on the side of it as well, as well as online uh, on the website. And you can go and try and figure out these codes. So we've not told people what it actually says. Um, just to get it away that this one's explored, but try and figure out where it is in the. They've got uh, a key area. now. <laughs> yeah, they've got a bit of a key, but you, you've got to find it in the in the area of the, the holding. And so this is like just again one of the, the the concepts where we've got this visual language, and all this has just got one of the hidden messages in there, so that people can go alongside this. It looks cool for the next couple of years. It provides a, a bit of a, an addition to the visual landscape of Milton Keynes when you're driving past it. We've had people pull up in the cars going, what the bloody hell is this? It's cool, what is it? Which is uh, like kind of Anthony Burrell print style. I like it, what is it? But um, And this is just like, this is the only photo because it's been going up in lockdown. And it's this is the only photo I've got of it uh, that's actually up in Milton Keynes right now because um, uh, I've not been able to go and we're just finishing off some of the, the some of the bits for this on some of the other sections. So again, it's just looking how you can create something that's visually interesting and striking, but conceptually links back to the history of the community and the local area, which is what we wanted to do with this project. And I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. I'm really, really happy with how this has already started engaging with. The, the 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 local community where younger people have been taught by the older generation of actually what this Morse code is and that all this cool looking funky stuff actually means something and then it's starting that conversation for Santander of well what does it say it starts it says this one says explore oh why does it say explore and then it, it links back to the branding program that I've just shown you so yeah. oh, that's grand from a marketing really perspective it all links yeah. So yeah, um, so I've flown through that. But uh, I kind really of... good. do you know next time you're down there, if uh, if you're coming up to top and top, give me a shout because uh, it's 15 minutes away from where I live. Actually, Blitz. Oh, is it? Oh, well, yeah. they, they can. There you go. You can try and figure all this out. Uh, you can. Yeah. Uh, you can. You can drop me a message and say, oh, "Does this one say this?" And uh, no, no. Yeah. No, we can do that. Uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, it's just. I mean, I hope that kind of demonstrates um, all that that kind of whirlwind tour of work shows that you can create anything that you want and work with clients, um, big or small, and, and create ideas that that really do have um, impact. Just kind of create that uh, concept first, mm. and, and then don't be afraid of different platforms or techniques or, or things that you can use to create. Um, to, to bring your ideas to life. You can create anything. Yeah. No, I think, uh, well, I did say right at the beginning that this was going to be a real treat for uh, everybody today, and I think that definitely uh, meets that description. It is a real treat. Your, uh, your uh, advice has been really great, um, encouraging people to explore. Uh, your, your, uh, so I've got a couple of things here that I noted uh, on the way through. Um James Davis has said, you're very grounded, Kyle. Um, and this is when we were talking around validation. Um, mm. If we judge someone's work based on their viewership, undiscovered talent will never break through if it goes yeah. that way. So that that's true. Um, 
uh, being asked if you've got any sketchbooks handy because they always love to see the beginnings. Uh, I, don't, I should imagine not not probably within uh, within arm's reach. So I'll um, see what's in it. Um, there. All oh, right. Uh, yeah. I do you have? It. Oh, there you go. Um, Amazing. So let's see if I can show you. Like just. Oh, in fact, that is the very first sketch of the Meadowall uh, project, which. It feels like I've set that up, but I've, I've not. That's, uh, no. I mean, that's how crap it looks. <laughs> I mean, if you want to know that, you can create anything from anything. You can create an entire campaign from that. Wow. Um, but so, it's your visual shorthand. That's the thing. As yeah. long as you can then, successfully reinterpret it. That's. It's got, I mean, it's got things like this, which is just like a table design that were, that were done... I, mean, I don't know if you can you can see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, I think we got the very first sketch of one of the lights, um, how it kind of fans out, and just like yeah, the, yeah. the idea. So it's just that that's how it starts out, and then it's just that perseverance of right, that could look all right, um, and that might look a bit shit, and figure it out, and and that's that's kind of that's really my. Um, design process which is very technical and scientific uh i, I appreciate it but uh hopefully that, i mean that if, if it's that if it's that simple it means anybody really can do it and anybody who's actually got um a really good idea about doing something then they, then they can really excel at it as well that's amazing it's, uh, so brian's been saying fantastic presentation so many powerful messages encouraging experimentation with materials and concept um Everybody's loving it, and uh, okay. this all Thank looks you. amazing. Um, can we have access to this presentation by any chance? I should imagine they could find most of this on your website, right? With that, yeah. There's, um, what I've done with this is uh, put, I put them on individual links that are, uh, they're actually hidden on the website. Some of the projects of uh, the Astro stuff are on the, uh, the, the the website. Um, I mean, please bear with me on the website as well. I actually, this is the first time the studio's had a site in three years, um, mm. and and it's probably riddled with spelling mistakes and, and images that, because I've done it a lot last, uh, we put, put it together for the last like week, points so for, ready for this. Um, yeah. So again, a bit of a kick up the ass when it comes to that accountability side of things. Uh, so, but yeah, I can, I can make it available. If anybody wants to see this or if anybody's got any questions, fire me an email, I'll do my best to, to, to help where, where possible. And even when it comes to that accountability side of things, um, try and help out with other people's accountability if you want um, to, to be held to that um, or even any advice on when somebody mentioned about welding um, how is that not on welding because like I mean I can try but it's probably mm. you, whatever you weld is going to fall apart um, <laughs> uh, yeah but it's, I can try and give you some pointers of of how best to approach a project if you've not done it for the first time That's um, amazing. So more than more than happy to just send me a tweet dm or email as well Cool fabulous too. well everybody of course will also be able to see this again on, on the replay actually which is something tim's just reminded me of of course they can so if you want to see the uh if you want to see uh, kyle talking about this again you can always watch it on the replay now we're about done for today and it's been fantastic having you with us carl really really Pleasure. have everybody's enjoyed uh you being along today it's been really great uh, don't forget, you can carry on the conversation on our Discord. Tim is posting the link for that. I, I blink and it's there. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, Tim's posted that into the chat right now. Uh, join us every day between 12 and 1. But any closing comments, Carl? And uh... no, Just just don't let anything hold you back and don't let anybody tell that you can't do anything because they're, they're talking shit. <laughs> fantastic there you go thanks everybody for joining us we'll see you tomorrow take care carl take care everybody Bye -bye. for you. now though cheerio see ya Bye -bye.